Hey y'all, welcome back to the Cigar Room for another episode of Texas Cigar Ru- Home Show. I'm David, I'm a Texan, and I love cigars. Stay tuned. Yeah, that's right, y'all. We're back in the cigar room for another Texas Cigar Home Show. One of our viewers uh, made that remark. I thought it was pretty clever, so I thought I'd use it. Uh, But yeah, we're still in the cigar room because I'm still recovering from my uh, back surgery. Everything is going good. Doctor's uh, therapist, uh, you know, doing my PT here at home kills me. Just amazing what little PT will wear me out. But uh, yeah, it's a it's pretty major surgery, but everything's going good. Uh, normally we would be in Tobacco Cabana in Cedar Hill. That's why I'm not there, still recovering, can't lift a whole lot of equipment, things like that. But uh, definitely want to shout out to Stephen and Rhonda there at Tobacco Cabana, and of course Dave Yancey with Leaf and Grain. That's who would normally be on the show. So we're going to be here in the cigar room uh, doing another episode. I hope that gave you guys some time uh, for a... Get something poured for your Texas toast. I've got, I'm gonna reach down real carefully and I've got my cup down here with some good old fashioned water. That's right, you can put anything, you can toast it with anything. We don't have to have whiskey. You don't have to have a bourbon or scotch or anything for that, that matter, just some water. Because we wanna toast you guys and ladies out there that watch us and support us and we're thankful for that because we wanna toast you to good friends, good conversations, what we call a Texas toast. Boom. Yeah, that's right. Water. Water with a cigar. It's um, it's what I'm going to do my pairing with. Stay tuned with which what the, that'll be. But uh, if you're going to do an honest pairing and you want to drink something with it, you're going to have to drink water. Uh, that way you're getting no influence whatsoever. But uh, speaking about cigars and pairings and things like that, how about some cigar news? <clears throat> what I've got off the bat right now is Lostados Deluxe Limited Edition is going to ship March 1st. So, yeah, we're already in March. Go look at your brick and mortars and find out where you can get this. This is the Lostados Deluxe Limited Edition, a masterful collaboration created between Matt Booth, which we've We've talked about on previous blends when they came out with the Lastados and they did redid the uh, branding, how Matt Booth uh, got his hands in on that. So Justin Andrews and William Ventura will ship to retailers on March 1st, a total of 3,000 boxes. So that's it's not a lot if you want to think about it. They've been produced and the blend will be retired after its release. Wow. Okay, so hence limited re- edition. Okay. The trio of cigar virtuosos embarked on a quest for perfection when developing the blend, each bringing a unique sensibility to the creative process. We know how creative Matt Booth is. The cigar speaks to their collective ability to weave an intriguing blend through a fabric of diverse nuances. That sounds intriguing right there. Matt Booth noted, this blend is sophisticated in nature. It's a medium to medium plus in body yet full in flavor, transition throughout the entire smoke. Wow, okay. That sounds transitioning and blending and full flavored and medium body. That sounds like a good, solid cigar. He says, uh, with so much complexity, there's only one downside to the cigar, and it's that it's literally going to go too fast, leaving you to wish the experience lasted longer. Wow. So um, Booth, Andrews, and Ventura selected a Connecticut-grown broadleaf. You know, I love that. Pennsylvania broadleaf. So you got two broadleafs together and a Corojo 98 from Nicaragua as the foundation of the cigar. Chose an Ecuadorian Sumatra binder. Wow. And it crowned the blend with a lustrous Mexican San Andreas wrapper. Those are all tobaccos that I love. The Pennsylvania broadleaf wrapper I love because of the saltiness that it, it introduces into a cigar. It's a really, to me, it's a really pronounced saltiness to it. And I like it. Uh, they say with a spellbinding aroma, 
rich floral notes balanced by white pepper and cocoa, a solid retrohale and clean finish. The cigar opens the palate to infinite pairings. It's all about the pairings. Like Dave Yancey says, explore the pairings. This sounds like an excellent cigar to go uh, explore some pairings with. And um, let's see. The, uh, the size of this is going to be a um, they're called, uh, limited edition Figurado, uh, five and a half by 50. The retail price is a little up there. It's a 16, uh, 1699, but it is a limited edition. Uh, sounds like a d delicious cigar. Um, but uh, 1699, that's, that's, that's up there just a little bit. But um, another piece of news, let me lay this off over here. Another piece of news. Uh, you guys know I love CAO, love all their stuff. But there are some CAO cigars I won't smoke just because of the Vitola. And um, this is going to be one of them. It just scares me looking at it. Um, <laughs> of course, I'm talking about the new Flathead uh, Resonator. Uh, it's, they're, they're saying it's uh, the biggest full-time front mark. They're saying buckle up. CAO fans, and I'm saying that right. This thing looks like it has a ton of horsepower. CAO will release its largest full-time flathead cigar to date with an 8x60 monster. There it is. That's the resonator. That is a bunch of cigar. I just... I don't know that I could do that. Um, I do have some friends, though, that love the 660 or the 770. Um, so definitely going to get one of these in their hands to let them see. Uh, I've heard it's a fantastic blend. Matter of fact, called uh, the Resonator uh, after the hefty component of a car's exhaust system. Uh, the cigar is handmade in Nicaragua at the STG Esteli with the same top-rated blend that comprises the rest of the Flathead franchise. The box-pressed Behemoth features a U.S.-grown con Connecticut broadleaf wrapper. There you go. Connecticut Habano binder and Dominican and Nicaraguan filler tobaccos and packs a powerful punch with notes of leather and molasses. That sounds really good. So the cigars are packed in 24-count boxes Imagine the size of the box, 24 count box. What the size of the box looks like that's going to house that thing. I want to see that. Uh, it's engineered with a plasma cut metal lid that doubles as the ultimate in garage art. Yes, I need that. You're looking at my cigar room here and you can see all the artwork I've got around me. Cigar boxes, my uh, McAuliffe right there, my other McAuliffe uh, should be off to my shoulder there somewhere I can't see. Uh, my McAuliffe Ambassador, my Texas Cigar Roadshow, other cigar boxes and artwork and things that I've got. I've got other little places up around the room that I'm always looking for little unique pieces to put up on the wall. And um, uh, that uh, definitely sounds like something I need. I got to find one of those boxes. But um, this is going to ship to retailers or it did ship to retailers on February 1st. So I'm a little late getting this to you. I know because I couldn't put the shows out because it's February is when I had my surgery. Um, so I apologize. But these are already out there in your brick and mortars. Go look for these. This is the CAO 8x60 Resonator. All right, guys, stay tuned. We will be right back. y'all welcome back for a little bit more news we've got uh some interesting stuff if you're out and about say louisiana way bozier city uh margaritaville club macanudo in margaritaville resort casino in bozier city so it's this uh this uh news release with february 16th again like i said i wasn't here because of my back surgery but uh interesting news if you haven't heard about it um they're launching its second U.S. location called Club Macanudo, Bossier City. The luxury cigar lounge marks the first resort to host the Club Macanudo brand and follows the February 2022 Premier Club in the Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. 
So um, very interesting. I, I'd like to get out to one of those in Bossier. In Bossier City, you know, Louisiana, that's just one state over from us here. But it's, you know, it's reachable without having to get on a plane. Developed in partnership with Margaritaville Resort Casino in Southern Smoke Cigar Company, Club Macanudo Bowser City is a meticulously appointed sanctuary that infuses elements of a sophisticated cigar lounge with coastal allure, ev evoking earth tones and a spa palette to create a haven of indulgence and leisure. Wow, I'm laid back already. Buttery soft leather seating, burl wood tables, and plush club chairs create intimate nooks for conversation while an alfresco lounge offers panoramic views of the resort. Interesting. At the heart of the lounge is a glass-enclosed humidor and a peninsula-shaped bar stocked with an array of wine and specialty spirits to satisfy an aficionado's palate. That sounds pretty pretty uh, intense to me, but but uh, quite intriguing. Uh, there they offers a created, uh, the, so Club Macanuda there offers a curated selection of the most sought after handcrafted cigars, a full collection of Macanudo cigars, go figure, right? It should, including classics, limited editions, and global bestsellers such as the Cafe Inspirado are available for purchase alongside a selection of Scandinavian tobacco group best-selling brands such as Cohiba, Punch, CIO, La Gloria Cubana, Partagas, and Alec Bradley. Chris Tarr, the Vice President of Marketing for Scandinavian Tobacco Group, which owns Club Macanudo and Macanudo Brand, he said that the opening of the Club Macanudo Bossier City marks a significant step in the expansion of our premium cigar lounge platform. With this strategic addition to the growing Club Macanudo collection, we have aligned our brand with the resort casino occasion, delivering a new touch point for cigar smokers to indulge in their passion for handmade cigars. We will continue to explore opportunities to develop additional lounges that align with brands across our entire portfolio. That is very interesting. So that opened up, uh, that this newsletter came out February 16th of this year and, uh, the host, the, the grand opening, like I said, was February 17th. So that's open. And if you're in the Bossier City area, man, that sounds like a place to drop by. And if you do drop by there and you shoot some video, send it my way. I would be happy to put that on the show and uh, show what one of our viewers, uh, uh, you know, is out there enjoying as far as uh, Club Macanudo or what a good cigar or lounge that we talked about. All right. Uh, a little bit more news. The... Uh, Punch Year of the Dragon release is inspired by fire. You know, this is the Year of the Dragon 2024 in the Chinese New Year. Uh, and with Punch and all their Chinese uh, releases for their Punch cigars, you know, the the Spring Roll, the Chopsticks, um, all those ones that they've got uh, that they came out with. Uh, the 2024 will be the first Year of the Dragon since 2012. And Punch will mark the mo momentous moment in the Chinese Zodiac on February 1st, 2020. So these are already out there. Matter of fact, here it is right here. This is the Punch Year of the Dragon 2024. And this is the cigar that I'm going to review today for the uh, cigar pairing, which it'll be paired with, of course, uh, water. But um, the... Uh, February 1st release when a limited edition smoke called Dragonfire. So it's called the Dragonfire, not just Year of the Dragon, but it is called the Dragonfire. It ships to retailers, like I said, on February 1st, so it should already be out there. Go get you some of these. I know there's lounges around where I'm at with it, with, that have them. Uh, the new release marks the sixth installment of the brand's highly successful Chinese New Year series, which has included these highly rated punch brand, uh, blends. Spring Roll came out in 2023 last year. Fu Manchu, 2022. Kung Pao, 2021. Chop Sui, 2020. And then the Egg Roll in 2019. John uh, Hakem, brand manager of Punch, said, We had a blast creating the bold and fiery blend and gave the cigar a flathead in a nod to the dragon, the wood dragon, 
that will preside over 2024. Okay. And in a shout out to the celebrations that will be sparked by the dragon's arrival, we made the packaging to look like a box of fireworks. Very interesting. You know, I've seen the boxes. I did not get a box of these. I just uh, got a five pack of these. Um, just because, you know, they're new cigars and I want to see, you know, what they smoke like before I get them. Um, but um, the handcraft, they're handcrafted at the STG Esteli uh, factory in Esteli, Nicaragua, which is a rarity for the brand. Punch Dragonfire was made to resemble a firecracker. Extending beyond the cigars Nicaraguan Condega binder and Nicaraguan Dominican and Honduran filler is its Mexican wrapper, which is a pressed down to replicate the way in which the casing of a firework extends beyond the plug inside. So let me take this, let me take this out of here. Press down so it does have a closed foot on there. You can see the closed foot. And there's the top. There's the top right there with that flat head that they're talking about. And so they're saying it's, maybe there are they talking about the foot? Um, yeah, the casing, I guess that would look like, yeah, it looked like a firecracker casing, yeah. Okay. The tobaccos come together to create a smoking experience that brims with the complexity of dark chocolate, pepper, earth, leather, and coffee notes. Interesting. I'll be um, interested to get into that. Punch Dragonfire cigars come in a 20-count box, and the blend will only be available in this special release. That is a 5 by 60 You know 60s are pushing it for me. That is just, that's on the end of, I don't want to go there. 56 might be the, you know, the CAO Brasilia 56. That's, that's the top. So 60 Um pushing it but i'll do it i'll suffer through it i'll do it for the cigar uh, review that we've got coming up um but this uh, msrp for, uh, for this is only uh 6.99 6.99 that's a good price so you guys that's the uh, punch dragon fire and uh go out there to your brick and mortar support them and find you either some cao or whatever brands those brick and mortars have get out there and support them support the lounge if it is a lounge great if it's not a lounge get out there purchase your cigars through them because you know those brick and mortars um, that's where a lot of your cigar knowledge uh camaraderie um is at uh, if you've got a good lounge where you're at uh just get out there and support that all right, guys, that's the news for uh, for right now. We'll be back. <laughs> we'll be. It's not the drugs kicking in. Don't worry about it. We'll be back right after this. Today's cigar tip is brought to you by McAuliffe Cigars. Time for another cigar tip. Here's what I've got for you. You went out somewhere with your cigars and you don't have a cutter. What are you going to do? Well, if you've got a pocket knife, you can definitely just cut around that cap at the very top and peel that cap off of there. Get the cigar opened up. That's what's going to work. You don't need to cut this thing like that to get it to, to open up. You just need to pop that cap off. If all else fails, use your teeth. Just bite a little hole in the top of the cap and open it up. Pick it out with your fingernails. And if, if you've got a pigtail cigar, that's what that pigtail's on there for. Bite it off and open up the cap. Great tip, right? Two families, one cigar. Join the Ambassador Program today to make it a perfect blend. All right, guys, welcome back uh, for another cigar pairing. It's not a, actually a cigar pairing, more rather than a cigar tasting today and a cigar review because 
I'm going to be pairing this one with water, like I said um, earlier. And that, again, what I'm going to review is going to be this uh, Dragonfire, Year of the Dragon from Punch 2024. Dragonfire. So that's a 5x60, 5.5x60, with a flat head, semi-closed foot. Looks like a firecracker. Yeah, so you know how I'm going to do this with a flathead? What I'm going to do with this is I've got one of these cigar punches that is made for a bigger ring gauge cigar. Everybody knows the ones that are bigger than the ring gauge is the nub. So um, that I'm going to Center that up best I can. Give that thing some nice twist, cutting through that cap. There it is. A little bit off centered, but whatever. You can see it there. There's my cut with that hopefully that's focusing if that's focusing there I don't know if it's focusing or not I can't see that far without my glasses on but it's punched I've got draw on there ooh what was that that taste right there so let's put my my uh, punch up, put, put that up there. Good. Cold draw, and it's definitely cedar. Definitely cedar and a light. It's like a real light coffee or espresso it's not real dark oh, I'd kind of say it was more of a coffee note on the cold draw so we need to get this thing fired up right so we can uh, review it this one calls for a big lighter so that closed foot get it toasted just a tad You know, it's got that closed foot, semi-closed foot. You definitely want to get the taste of it. Wow, definitely getting some. Now, I can't remember. Call it, I can blame it on the drugs. The medication, I should say, that I'm taking for my back med. But I can't remember the notes that they said because I read this earlier for the uh, news. But that is definitely Oh. That's definitely white paper pepper on that retro hill right there. I mean it just barely tingles. Barely tingles. But it's got definitely a interesting floral. It does have a light floral note to it, sweetness to it, a sweetness type to it. It's not like overly sweet, but it's it's got a sweetness to it. Mm. Well, I'm definitely getting light. It's not a cocoa. It's more of a coffee note to it. More of a coffee note. White pepper on the retro hill. And it's still cedar. Getting a cedar note in there. I think if you don't get cedar in a cigar, some type of wood note, kind of strange. Um, seeing how they're stored around cedar. They're going to pull pull that off a lot. 
Uh, that's just my opinion. Um, yeah, you know, the 60 ring gauge is not too bad. Now, I don't have to worry about going cigar to drink, drink to cigar, because I'm just drinking water. But I will take a drink to kind of cleanse my palate a little bit, see if I can pick up something else on it. Great smoke output. It's kind of like a firecracker, right? Yeah, that's... Uh, hmm. It's a good-looking cigar. It's um, got a nice... I can see that, you know, this oil... Uh, with the light shining on there, got a nice dark oily... Not a whole lot of veins running on. It's uh, it's not toothy at all. The only thing I have against it is, of course, the ring gauge. Um, that's it. One of my favorite uh, of this Chinese series of this was the uh, spring roll. I like that one. I, I think I like the Kung Pao, too. The Kung Pao was pretty good. Everybody's been back and forth on some of those. Uh, some of them were, you know, really good uh, blends by a lot of people, and some of them were good blends by just some people. And that's the thing about cigars, right? You've got so many different blends. Everybody's palate's different. You can listen to what I say and what I'm tasting in it, or you can listen to whomever else out there and take their word for it. But you gotta know, when you smoke the cigar, you're not gonna taste exactly what they taste when they taste it, um, because you, their palate's different. You didn't eat what they did that morning, that afternoon, that the day before. All those things come into play when you're tasting a cigar. So take what I'm saying here with a grain of salt. Um, I'm not, uh, you know, the best at trying to pinpoint certain things. Um, but I can tell you if I like it or not, and that's for sure. And right now I'm really enjoying this. So um, why don't I get into this cigar? I'm going to come back after we get into this cigar and uh, I get through the first third, start getting into the second third, and I'll come back and I'll let you guys know. All right, guys, welcome back. Getting into the um, second third there. Now, there would have been a little bit more ash on there, but about half an inch in, the ash fell off in my, in my lap. Uh, totally surprised me. You can look at the burn there. It's, um, it's pretty good. I have not touched it up at all. You can tell by looking at the wrapper, there's no char marks or anything like that on the uh, ash. You can see a little weird looking on the top. That's where it broke off. So I am going to ash this because I'm just afraid it's going to fall off in my, my lap again, and I don't want it to do that. So um, just going to, well, it's, it, that one, that's strange because that, took a little bit to break that off but yet a half an inch in and that thing just fell off right in my lap uh totally surprised me but getting into the uh the second third of this like i said still great output didn't have to touch um smoke output didn't have to touch this up at all Wave, it's a little wavy through there, but it's a big cigar. Um, on that retro hail right there, the white pepper was gone. So I was getting a little white pepper at the first part, and it kind of a coffee note at the first third. That's basically all I was getting. It's kind of transitioned into a more of a, a sweet leather uh, type note now. Uh, like I said, I'll try to retro hail again here, and let me see if I'm getting anything out of it. Oh, that was, that was phenomenal. Those sweet notes really came through on that retro hill. That, that is, I mean, it's an earthy, leathery, sweet leather type. No, you say, Dave, how are you getting sweet leather? Who hasn't chewed on the straps on their baseball mitt? 
Um, I know I did when all the years that I played baseball. And you get that sweet leather type of taste, but then it's got a sweet note with that Mexican wrapper in this. Definitely get some sweet notes to come through. If there's any pepper on that, it's white pepper. Hits me at the back <clears throat> on that retro back top roof of my mouth. So I'm going to take a little drink of water right now to cleanse that. Overall, the only downside I have to this cigar is the size and the Vitola and the flat head thing. Um, it's a unique blend, a unique Vitola, and I know what they're doing, making it look like a firecracker and, and so forth. But, man, I wish this could be in a different Vitola. It's the only thing. That's the only thing. The band is very cool. Like I said, you take a look at that band. 2024 there, that's a band that is worth keeping. Um, it's a great looking wrapper. I mean, just it's it's a good looking cigar. It's performing well. Draws perfect. Great smoke output. I'm going to purge it there a little bit. Because it was starting to die on me. And you see there, you go purge a cigar. And when it's dying on you like that, and that thing will fire right back up. So you don't always have to retouch. The only time I retouch is if the wrapper is not staying up with it. Which, if I'm not careful, see how that's concaving inside there a little bit? How it's getting the wrapper is is not with the tobacco down in there that could eventually constitute having to catch it up it almost looks like it's canoeing a little bit if you'll look at that if you can see that in there almost but it could be because I was letting it sit for a little while because I had to reset some things, go get some water. Um, so, yeah. So, I am going to retouch it up here. But on these notes, and all I'm going to do is just like the, just like the tip that I had a couple of weeks ago or so, is you just want to hit that edge and light that edge up just enough and then that should do it yeah so getting into the second third it's like a sweet leather sweet leather white pepper on the retro hell if there is anything seems like there's one other flavor in there that i'm i'm getting that i'm not quite sure what it is i mean it's Maybe that will be more prominent in the last third. There's something else in there that I'm not, I can't pinpoint for some reason, but it is a sweet, leathery type of note. So anyways, so we'll do that. We'll, uh, we'll uh, stop down here and I'll continue on and I'll come back with the, uh, the final third, okay? All right, we're back in for the uh, last third. You can see I'm there. I've got the band off. Popped the band off just fine. No glue came off of it on the ends. I like that. Came out pretty easy. Pretty cool. This is like a uh, fortune cookie thing. Or a, more of a wisdom thing. Not a fortune cookie. But uh, 
on the back it says, if you don't post a pic of your cigar online, did you even really smoke it? I think that's pretty cool. We can see that in there, the light's kind of bright on that white paper, but written on the back there. I like that, it's cool when you find some things. I think um, there's several companies, McAuliffe does some printing on the back of their cigar bands, Drew Estates, I've seen some printing on the back of their cigar bands. Um, that's always fun when you find something in there like that. Um, but anyways, getting back to the cigar, last third, um, I haven't had to touch it up at all, but the ash got flaky on me again, and part of it fell off in my lap again. So I've been ashing it regularly just to make sure I didn't have to mess with that. Still putting out good smoke. The white pepper has come back. It's not a lot, but it's come back. The white pepper's come back in there. I'm still getting an earthy, leathery, sweet leather note. I'm not getting any chocolate. Um, I'm not getting any floral. I'm not getting any vegetable type of notes or anything like that. It's just... To me, it's sweet, leather, slight pepper in there. Yeah. That's all I'm getting out of it, which, that's not bad. I enjoy those tastes. It's getting a little bit harsher on my palate as I'm getting down here. So I find myself uh, drinking some water a little bit more often. Definitely used to smoking cigars with a spirit, but I haven't had a spirit with a cigar in over a month. Golly. Um, so it's, I'll look forward to when I can pair something with a cigar, uh, pair something with a spirit again. But as far as this gar uh, cigar goes, I mean, the burn kept up pretty good. You saw me, I had to retouch it that one time. I like closed foots, so that's interesting. You know, I said, like I said, the, the Vitola is the only thing that's a real big downfall for me is the size. I just don't, I don't gravitate towards these. Corona Gorda, Corona Lonsdale, those are the ones, you know, Lanceros too. Those are ones I really, really enjoy. Next to that would be a Robusto, then a Toro. And I would put the Grandes and the bigger ring gauges at the bottom of my uh, smoking desires. The cigar tastes, if you guys enjoy a good earthy leather sweetness type of um, cigar, and then it's got a little bit of pepper, it's definitely a white pepper. It is not a black harsh, definitely not red pepper. I would have thought that if it was a firecracker, they could have put some red pepper notes in there somehow to kick it up a notch. But I know a lot of people don't really like um, pepper notes in their cigars at all. Yeah. That retro ale right there, it's just ever so slightly white pepper. And that's all I'm getting is just a sweet leather, earthy type of note out of this cigar. It's good. Um, I probably won't pick this one up as often just because of the Vitola. That's the only reason why. Other than that, the taste of it I enjoyed. Um, construction, everything, except for the ash being a little iffy sometimes. That's strange to me because halfway through, not halfway, but in, into the second third, the ash was a little bit tight to try to break off of there. So it got me thinking. Then and when I got into the 
bottom half of the uh, second third, the uh, ass, half an inch of the ass dropped off in my lap again. Um, so it, it was strange. But other than that, you guys go out there, try to, if, if they're still in the brick and mortars, I would suggest picking it up. It, uh, I know a lot of guys like the bigger ring gauges. Uh, I think it's uh, definitely a smoke worthy cigar. Uh, this is, again, the Punch Dragonfire 2024, five and a half by 60 flathead, flat top, at least, not a flathead sear. Not a flathead series, excuse me. Um, but I think it's definitely a, an interesting cigar to smoke. Um, again, once we get back into Tobacco Cabana and Dave Yancey's there with me, we can do um, cigar pairings again. This was really not a pairing because I had water, so there's really nothing to pair with other than just reviewing the cigar. So I hope you guys enjoyed that um, little cigar review that we had. Stay tuned, we'll be right back. Pick up your collectible Texas Cigar Roadshow laser engraved whiskey glass at giftygarage.net. All right, guys, welcome back to the Texas Cigar Roadshow. And we've got another accessory to review. Again, um, another one from Cigarism. That is Cigarism right there. Um, this one's a bigger box. Again, same thing we've got with this. A nice band around it. I like that. So, you know, they're they're it to me it's the little things that that they put into the packaging. It's not just a box. Some people that really matters. Um it's just like the band on a cigar. You know, the 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 more or, ornate a uh, cigar band is, it draws certain people in. They like it, they think it's it, 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 it gives it appeal. It, it draws your eyes to it right away. So little things like this, uh, it does matter. So the box, again, it's got that same type of feel and, and look on that on that box where it has got that finish on there. So it's a nice, nice box. Oh, wow. This is even in its own little velvet lined bag. So yeah, it's a soft velvet lined bag yeah you definitely use that for something else storing something you got a nice bag there drawstring bag and uh covered in plastic nice it's protected there so ooh, this has got you can see this here pressing in there how that that leather is nice and padded. It's a good size. I like the engraving on the on the front there. The cigarism, good size uh, zipper pull. And I love that red stitching. Man, if I had a car, because it reminds me of my granddad's car. Um, he loved red interior on his uh, automobiles, and just red and black in an automobile's interior. Uh, that's just my thing. And so this right here, this stitching uh, looks fantastic. Big, easy cigar, I mean, um, zipper pull on there. Open that up and we've got our um, cigar travel door. It has got, of course, uh, the good old silica stuff. Get that out of there. Ah, and it's got, um, so you've got right here in the lid, you've got your... Um, let me be able to hold this. You've got your humidification device with the beads in there. I can I can hear them in there. So you've got your little water piece to to be able to put the water in there and soak the beads up. Um, only I just don't like those things. Be, I've got beads coming out of here, so you need to get that thing wet so that the beads don't come out of there. But um, it's uh, got a cedar tray in here. It looks like, looks like so a vel Velcro um, to keep the cigars down. Looks like that this can bring out. Let me see if I can bring this out. Yes, I can. I can take the tray out 
and I could just lay cigars in here like this without the tray if I wanted to. So maybe I can fit five in there without that. I don't know, or I might be able to double layer them somehow without this, but with this in there, it's only gonna allow you to keep four cigars in there. And that is a little different than most uh, travel packs that I've seen is um, because most travel packs are, are five, five sticks. So this has only got four in there, which is fine. I mean, four or five, What if you're gonna take a travel door this size with you, that's still a good day for you. It's four cigars. Now, if you're giving something away, that's another thing. But um, that's, that's a little different. It's four cigars instead of five. Usually they're five fingers. They do have some on here, it looks like, uh, that carry more cigars. So you've got your your instructions and so forth that come in here with it. And that um, shows you some of the other, other ones that they have. Make sure you go to the description below for a 20% uh, off the uh, price of these uh, on their site. Um, with the code uh, that is going to be somewhere around here. Might be in the, just check check the description. So this also comes with a light uh, cutter. You know, it's just an average looking color cutter to me. It's got their logo on the, on the back of that. Uh, I don't know if you can see that on there, but it does have the, Cigarism logo on there, so that's good. I think just about any other cutters can fit in there. And then it comes with also a little lighter package. So that definitely is a single flame. It's got the cigarism light on that uh, on that lighter there. Definitely going to be doesn't have any fuel in it. Obviously, uh, it's got a little fuel window on there. And it's going to be a single flame lighter. So that will go in there. It's got the pouches on there. Okay, so that's good. It's got, you know, you're trying to get, get this thing out of there. It does have a finger push so you can, you can, it's got a hole in the bottom here so you can push that finger up and, and reach in there and get your lighter out. And it does the same on the, the cutter also. Um, I mean, it's... If you didn't want to use the, you know, the humidification device, you can definitely just put a Bovida pack in there, but that's up to you. That's not taking up any extra space. Um, but yeah, it's a gorgeous little piece. And if you're just going for a day trip somewhere and you need four cigars and I mean, how many cigars you need that you're going to smoke in a day? I don't even, I rarely smoke more than four cigars in a day. I know there's plenty of friends out there that smoke more, but Rarely do I smoke more than four cigars in a day. And um, I mean, it's just a classy looking, it feels great. It's one of those things where you just, you just want to keep rubbing it because it's got that nice feel to it, the leather feel to it. And uh, again, that red stitching looks fantastic. So um, this is uh, the Cigarism travel door, uh, travel case. And this is, uh, the CMH29 is the, the one I've got. Uh, again, go to the description below for um, um, a code that you can use for this and, the, and where you can find it. And uh, again, that's another uh, cigar accessory that uh, is uh, through Cigarism. All right, guys, welcome back. Uh, that's another show here in the cigar room. Uh, again, we're not in Tobacco Cabana because uh, my back surgery and I'm here and uh, in my cigar room at home for a Texas Cigar Home Show edition. Uh, hope you enjoyed that. The news, the cigar review, uh, cool accessory from Cigarism. Um, you guys, you know, cigar tips. Um, if you guys have a cigar tip that we haven't covered, or a 
cigar word or anything else that you haven't seen on the show that you want to stick in there, definitely give you credit for uh, for giving it, um, giving the uh, info my way. Uh, but again, um, get out there and help me continue to grow. The numbers are going up, uh, obviously, still doing good on the numbers, and I appreciate that to you guys. Go out there, like, share, uh, subscribe, hit those notification bells so that you guys can get notified when I get new stuff that comes out. Um, again, thankful for all you guys sticking with me through this uh, this time of, of trying to figure out you know how to handle this this stuff when I don't uh, can't get out to Tobacco Cabana. But I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the show. Uh, and just remember, I can't get out. And so those for you guys that can get out to the lands, don't take that stuff for granted, man. It is, uh, you know, something that I've missed. Uh, I got to go out once for a cigar. Uh, we had a meeting, but man, that, that two hours that I was there wore me out. And I just sat down. I just, you know, it was just being on, you know, when you're at a, an event. Um, so the Lone Star Cigar Association, we had a monthly meeting in Latitude Cigar, and that two hours just wore me out. Um, so don't take it for granted. Be out there with your friends, your family, and your brick and mortars, and uh, support those. And just uh, always remember while you're there, enjoy the leaf, grow the culture. Texas Cigar Roadshow is presented by Lone Star Cigar Association. 